slapped. Well, for the big time like this. And you see, there she is, at fence nine, skipping through B and C. They were fourth at Bromont in the CCI three star last year, and you see her riding with a fierce determination and grit. Well, this is a big competition for her because she she needs to prove to the world that the horse is as good as those of us in the background think it is, and that she is is able to ride a horse that that's that is that good and to produce the results. He's a ten year old Oldenburg gelding owned by the Chatwin Group. And she can afford to be 12 seconds over the time and still go into the lead ahead of Buck Davidson and Archie Rocks. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to think like that. You want to, you want to think, I've got to stay on my minute yeah. markers, uh, and I've got, to, I've got to get out here and produce. So she's coming now. You saw her over that sunrise ditch. She's coming now to the Chesapeake water. She's going to go up the mound to that skinny stump and then down to splash over the duck. And we've really seen that riding well all day, Jimmy, too. Yes, yes. I think we've had one or two problems there in the entire course of the competition. Uh, again, I, I had expected a little bit more trouble there just because the, that place has bad feng shui. Whatever Derek builds there <laughs> is usually influential. Yeah, so we and usually it, see it, it shaking up the leaderboard. It might be that he's designed stuff so that that is not true this year. So but if that's what happened, I wouldn't want to come back and ride down to it next year because he'll, <laughs> he'll, absolutely have some, not. <laughs> he'll have something there for you. You see, this is around to the coffin, which we haven't seen yeah, a lot of today. We haven't seen this shot. You know, two strides up to the corner, and she's a little weak coming out, but but gets it done. Well, and that's a big corner, Jimmy, a when you walk corner. up to it, and it's well, an it's uphill also approach. Big, big uphill approach. And you land over the ditch, you land against what we call rising ground, and that has a tendency to stall the horse a little bit, and the rider has to be very, very aggressive. I think the next time Frankie gets in that kind of a situation, she'll override that a little more. Well, unfortunately, news coming in from control that Colleen Rutledge had two refusals at that triple brush at 22B and opted to retire with confidence game. Well, well that's a heartbreaker because I know she really felt as if he were coming back to himself. So you see now we have an overhead shot of our dressage <coughs> leaders, Frankie Terriot, Stutes, and Chatwin. We haven't seen this overhead view yet, Jimmy, but this is great because it shows how long that uphill pull is. She is going yes. up to the top of the course. You're still tending uphill. She's at jumping fence 15 right now, and that's about 20 or 25 efforts, and they've been tending uphill the whole way. It's over a mile on the outside perimeter, and so they have covered you know, a mile and a half, two miles by now by winding back and forth. And now they are at 16. This is the persimmon turn. It's a narrow open ox over there and then a right hand turn to an angled brush set over a ditch. So you see she's all clear there. And we haven't seen that combination today, Jimmy, but that's not an easy one either when you walk it. There's so that much to do with on this course at every combination. Derek had that combination there last year and it, it caused so much trouble that he didn't adjust it. And so he left it in, and it, it's funny, this year everyone's jumping it because they have probably practiced yep. that sort of problem. So you see, Frank, you yeah. really having, balancing Chatwin, having a conversation, getting him back for the Serena combination over the log and then down to the triple brush. Well, he knew exactly yes. where he was going and what he wanted yes. to be doing. That, that was a real sit still, I got this, Mom. Well, and I think you see that the horse is jumping with a lot of confidence. Yes. I will say, I'd be surprised if she makes the time because he is so fast and he is so strong. You see, she has to wrestle with him uh, to get him back under control, and that just takes time. So this is the farmhouse corners at 19. All clear there for Frankie Terriot, Stutes, and Chatwin. Now, 12 seconds. She can afford that and still go into the lead. And you see them having these conversations, and every time you have to have that bit of balancing, that does take time off the clock. So Frankie is all clear through the horseshoe brush at fence 20. 
She's making her way towards the ninth minute marker. See the breeze is picking up a little bit. You can see those uh, orange, orange markers. That's where the pedestrian crossings are. Breeze is starting to, to move, move the leaves and so on. I think that's good for the horses. The horses like, like conditions like that. Keeps the air moving, keeps the air clean. I think they breathe a little more easily. That's the first time we've seen that entire complex from this angle. You see how big that, that chevron brush is uh, at 22B and how tall. It's, it's higher than it is wide. And that's a very strange uh, sensation, jumping. You feel as if you're jumping a knife blade. So this is Frankie Terriot Stutes and Chatwin, our overnight leaders after the first phase. They are all clear through fence 23 making their way now around to these angled logs. This is a new combination on the course this year, and we have seen it causing trouble today. So far, so good. Beautifully done. Yep. I think it, it, when, when Frankie comes back to ride an event this night, she'll ride a little shorter, and I think she'll get herself a little fitter because when you see riders throwing their body back like that, it usually means they're getting a little tired. Now the final combination on course. This is the Springhouse Water. Oh, lucky, lucky, lucky. And you see her giving him big yeah. pats. She knows that he just really came through for her when he needed it. And Jimmy, doesn't that say it all about this sport? It is about a partnership between the horse and the rider. And sometimes the horse is going to come through for you. Yes, yes. They, they have to save you. And sometimes you have to save them. Um, and saving them can be a, a question of making sure that you, you give them enough time in a turn. Saving them can mean that you don't let them run wide open because they, they will run out of puff before they get to the finish line. Uh, and sometimes they need.